Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we move to Artois, France from the 25th of September through the 4th of November 1915 for the Third Battle of Artois. French Allied Commander General Victor D'Herbel, a lifer in the French Army commanding the French 10th Army comprised of 10 divisions with more than 160,000 men when fully equipped, attacked the German defenses alongside fellow British career officer General John French, commander of eight divisions of 247,000 troops of the British 1st Army as they began operations against the German forces. Defending against the French attack was Crown Prince Rupert. It should be noted that Rupert was exiled before World War II when the Nazis gained full control. Even though Hitler tried to win him over, Rupert would not work with the Nazis. Accompanying him were nine divisions of the 6th Army, or approximately 220,000 men when fully equipped. The end result would be a technical French win, but with the casualties, as was often the case for World War I, there was no real victor in the end. This assault by the French with British support was happening at the same time as the Battle of Loup and in conjunction with the Second Battle of Champagne. The main purpose to take the Douai railway line and force the Germans to pull back from what was known as the Noyon salient. The initial bombardment consisted of over a thousand French field guns and artillery, firing more than 1.5 million field gun shells and more than a quarter of a million heavy artillery rounds. The artillery bombardment lasted for four days from September 21st until September 25th, when at precisely 1225 the French army attacked at Suchez village and La Foley farm. Rain hampered the assault, which in turn slowed down the artillery bombardment due to the lack of scouting from aircraft. This also broke down communications between the French and British forces. While the French did breach the first German line, they were hammered at Nouvelle saint vaast and was unable to penetrate the German second line of defense. The end result was no major gain for the French forces. Seeing this result, French command ordered Dierbol to conserve ammunition, which would extinguish any hope the French had of taking advantage of the small gains they did have. This assault had used so much artillery ammunition, the Allied forces in our next battle, the Second Battle of Champagne, had to reduce how much they could use. The battle was really over by the 13th of October, ending with exhausted troops and bickering among the command staff over who was responsible for the loss as they sat in their slightly newer trenches until the beginning of November. The overall losses were high, with the French suffering more than 50,000 killed, wounded, or missing. Not to be outdone, however, the British had approximately 62,000 dead, wounded, or captured, while the Germans themselves lost approximately 50,000 men, killed, wounded, or missing, with an additional 2,000 captured by the French. The combined Allied loss was more than 112,000 men to Germany's 52,000. Not a great couple of months for either side. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.